Alright, so in the last video I broke down what an ellipse was, the different parts of an ellipse. Now we're actually going to work with a standard form ellipse and we're going to be able to identify the type of ellipse it is. Is it horizontal or is it vertical? What the center is, what the vertices are, what the co-vertices are, and what the foci is. Now, your, original, your equation right here is x minus 1 squared over 4 plus y plus 2 squared over 16 equals 1. It looks like it's in standard form, but it's not quite there yet because your bottoms need to be a number squared. So we have to rewrite our bottoms as some number squared that will equal 4. Well, conveniently, 2 squared equals 4. So we would have to rewrite the equation as x minus 1 squared over 2 squared plus y plus 2 squared over, let's see, 16. We can rewrite it as 4 squared. The way that you can do this, if you don't know in your top of your head, take the square root of the number on the bottom, the square root of 16 is 4, and then square it, because you're undoing the square root. It becomes 4 squared equals 1. This is now a standard form. From here, you can answer your very first question. What type of ellipse is this? You always look for the biggest number being squared because your A is always your biggest number. The biggest number being squared is 4. That is directly above your Y. Your Y, therefore, your major axis is going to be parallel to your Y axis, making it vertical. So your type is vertical. So that's the very first one you should be able to answer because once you identify if it's horizontal or vertical, you're going to have formulas that will tell you how to find everything else. I've already written them here for the vertical, where we have our center, our vertices, our covariance, and the foci. They're just basic formulas, but in each, each of these formulas, we need to know our H, our K, our A, our B, and our C. So, like we always do, write a list. H, K, A, B, and C. My H. H is always what's being added or subtracted to the X and you change the sign. We're subtracting a 1, therefore my H is a positive 1. You don't have to write the positive sign. It's just there just to show you. Your K is always attached to your Y and you change the sign. It's whatever's being added or subtracted. We're adding a positive 2, therefore my K is a negative 2. My A is always for an ellipse. For an ellipse is always the biggest number being squared. I have a 2 being squared and I have a 4 being squared. Well, 4 is bigger than 2, therefore my A is 4. My B is the other number being squared. In this case, it is 2. Or you can think of it as the smallest number being squared. It's 2. To find my C, we have to do a little bit of arithmetic. We have an equation. It's going to be C squared equals A squared minus B squared. With this, you need to know two of the three. Either you have to know A or B. C or A, any combination like that, but you have to know two of the three to solve for the third one. In this case, we know A and B, so we plug them in. C squared equals, my A is 4, so this becomes 4 squared minus, my B is 2, 2 squared, C squared is 16 minus 4, therefore C squared equals 12. Then to get rid of the square, you must do the square root. And I preach that you must do a plus or minus with your square root, getting yourself a habit of doing that. C becomes plus or minus the square root of 12. But C is a distance. If you remember back to the first video, C is your distance from your center to your focus. Therefore, you cannot have a negative distance. So your C is only positive 12. Do not leave it as a positive 12. You must break it down. You must. So we can do that factor tree. 2. How many times is 2 going to 12? 6 times. How many times is 2 going to 6? 3 times. We look for our couples. We have a couple of 2's. One of them comes on the outside. Therefore my C is 2. Whatever's left is underneath the square root. 2 square root of 3. So that is my C. 2 square root of 3. Once you have your H, your K, your A, your B, and your C, you're now able to answer your center, your vertices, your co-vertices, and your foci. So here we go. My center is just H comma K. We'll have a positive 1 and a negative 2. Therefore, my center is 1 comma negative 2. Your vertices, there's a formula. It is H. I mean, there's going to be two of them because you have a plus or minus in here, but it's H, so that doesn't change, so just write it in. Your H is 1 comma some number, and then 1 comma some number. We have to find that number. 
The way we find that number is we're going to do k plus a and k minus a. Well, my k is a negative 2 plus my a, which is 4, and a negative 2 minus a 4. Basic arithmetic at this point. Negative 2 plus 4 is just a positive 2. And a negative 2 minus 4 is nothing more than a negative 6. So you come over and you bring these numbers here. 2 and negative 6. Therefore, your vertices of this ellipse are 1 comma 2 and 1 comma negative 6. You move right down the line, we find our co-vertices. This time it is h plus or minus b comma k. Well, your k doesn't change, so you're going to need to have two points. Your k doesn't change, so bring that over. Negative 2, negative 2. Use your formula, h plus or minus b. Well, my h is a 1 plus 2 and a 1 minus 2. Basic arithmetic then. 1 plus 2 is just 3. 1 minus 2 is nothing more than a negative 1. Therefore, your co-vertices are 3 comma negative 2, negative 1 comma negative 2. Last thing to find are your foci. Your foci is just another formula again. There are two of them. With the ellipses, the only thing that there's not two of is a center. And I hope you don't have a center with two, uh, an ellipse with two centers because you did something wrong then. All right, so the foci, it is h, comma, k, plus or minus to c. So give yourself two sets of points. Your h does not change, so write it in, 1, 1. Now we have to do k plus c and k minus c. My k is a negative 2 plus my c, which is 2 square root of 3. And then I have to do negative 2 minus 2 square root of 3. You have to remember your rules of square roots. You cannot add anything that is not attached to a perfect square root of 3. 2 does not have a square root of 3 on it, therefore this is your simplified version. You could factor a 2 out, but I'm not asking you to do that at this time. Right here is your simplified version. You could factor a negative 2 out, but I'm not asking you to do this. I will accept these answers. So your foci at this point is going to be 1 comma negative 2 plus 2 square root of 3 and negative 2 minus 2 square root of 3. You get all of that information from your general equation. You can get your a, your b, and then once you have an a and a b, you find your c. In the standard form equation, you have your h and a k. Just you have to remember your h is with your x and you change the sign. Your k is with your y and you change your sign. The orientation, you look to see the biggest number being squared. Look to see which variable it's above, and it's going to be parallel to whichever axis that is. The y-axis is vertical, therefore this must be a vertical ellipse.